Log Talk Radio. So the most high is going to stop the flowing of the people going into that country. Read. Jeremiah chapter 51, uh, the end of verse 44. Yea, the wall of Babylon shall fall. Verse 45. My people, go ye out out of the midst. Hold up, read that again. My people, go ye out of the midst. I of think, earth. I think within this chapter, he said to see and get out of around three, four times. Right? Read. My people, go ye out of the midst of her, and deliver ye every man his soul from the fierce anger of the Most High Ahiah. And let your heart faint, and ye fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land. A rumor shall both come one year, and after that in another year shall come a rumor. And wars and rumors of wars. You hear about it, and because it's not happening, you think it's not going to happen. Read. Verse 46. Uh, end of verse 46. And violence in the land. Ruler against ruler. Verse 47. Therefore, behold, the days come that I will do judgment upon the graven images of Babylon. And her whole land shall be confounded, and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her. Then the heaven and the earth, and all that is therein, shall sing for Babylon. For the spoiler shall come up unto her from the north, saith the Most High the highest. As Babylon hath caused the slain of Israel to fall, so as Babylon shall fall the slain of all the earth. Ye that have escaped the sword, go away, stand not still. Remember the Most High Ahiah afar off, and let Jerusalem come into your mind. Listen to this clear. Ye that have escaped the sword, that means you escaped the destruction that coming to Babylon, go away and stand not still. So when you leave, remember the power of the God, a higher, a far off. And let Jerusalem come into your mind. That, that looking forward, not looking back. Now let Jerusalem come into your mind. She's finished. Right? We, verse 51, we are confounded because we have heard reproach. Shame has covered our faces. For strangers are coming to the sanctuary of the Lord's house. Strangers have destroyed us. Strangers have destroyed our sanctuary, our belief. The un- they destroyed our understanding so that we cannot connect to our God. They have given us their God. Baal, Baal, Satan, the dragon, Moloch. These are the gods we've been worshiping ignorantly. Jesus. Okay, we ain't know nobody named Jesus. Total madness. And then when we wake up and understand these things, we say, well, hold up. I'm a stranger here. You dragged me here. And the most high starts reviving us. They be like, okay, we have one who's the extremist. You are terrorist. Read on. Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 52. Wherefore, behold, the days come, says the most high Ahia. That I will do judgment upon her graven images. So destroy all your images and your idols. And, and, and man, if you look at, if you even look at Washington DC, it's it's idol after idol, monuments of idols, obelix, which is man's personal member. That's what uh, obelix is. What's that? The Washington Monument. Idols everywhere. Five pointed stars every place. But what if some did not do that? So what if you don't believe what we're teaching you? Paul asked, So what if some did not believe? Shall your unbelief make the faith of God without effect? You mean the most high is going to stop his own program because you don't believe so? No, you're dead. That's what you are. Okay, he has his program was before us. And it will be well after us. And that's, that's for the people that's walking out there. They want to say it's all the time. There have always been these situations. Every few years this happens. Nothing is going to change. That's a dead man. Shabbat Shalom. Barakatam. Wa The peaceful Sabbath bless you all. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Friday Night Sabbath. Coming out of Babylon. 
here on blogtalkradio.com for the Gathering of Christ Church. I'm your host, Brother Ramar Karab. Uh, with me in the studio, we also have Brother Shawa. It is 4.04 p.m. Central Standard Time, March 18, 2016. And I want to say, uh, you know, special hello to you brothers and sisters out there. Um, it has been a while since we have had a, a broadcast, so just want to, um, you know, make sure all you brothers and sisters out there are doing well. Uh, first show of the new year, as we just had a, uh, a new year begin. Um, matter of fact, the last, was it Saturday night, going into Sunday, was the beginning of the new year, according to the Bible. So hope you brothers and sisters are having a great new year so far. And um, we have the Passover coming up next next week. So I know a lot of you brothers and sisters out there preparing for the Passover and are, uh, you know, one of the most celebrated and major holy days of the year. All right, so I know you brothers and sisters got big plans on for that day. Um, I want to give all praises to the Most High, high in the name of His Son, Christ Yeshua, for being able to be here for his holy day, the seventh day of the week, Sabbath, which should be kept weekly as a commandment, and also being able to be on the broadcast here on Blog Talk for the Gathering of Christ Church um, as, as well. It's always a blessing to be able to come on here and bring forth information, uh, you know, speak to your brothers and sisters and, and, and see what's on your minds and what you know has been going on in your neck of the woods, and you know what you see that's going on uh, when it comes to uh, you know current events, Bible prophecy. Uh, so a lot of information to go through tonight. Um, you know, there's, there's so much happening, so much information to talk about. So we want to cover as much as we can uh, while we can. Um, some of the main things we're going to be speaking about um, is the uh, the, the nuclear war that's on the horizon. Uh, we're going to go into the nuclear war. Um, also, the uh, the plagues that are uh, promised to America, um, according to um, when we read in all throughout the scriptures when it talks about Babylon or the daughter of Babylon, the plagues that will come upon her. We're going to go into some of those plagues and, and things on the horizon that are, are shaping up uh, plague-wise um, in, in America and uh, a lot more. So just kind of wanted to give a sneak preview of some of the things that we'll be discussing before we uh, go into some uh, announcements. Um, so we're going to, and, that, and that'll be for segment one, when we go into uh, news, current events, and Bible prophecy. And we're going to actually go into some church announcements so that um, any new members, new listeners, maybe those who just may not know the different ways that you can follow along and listen to the Gathering of Christ Church, just want to go through some announcements right quick before we uh, get started with uh, segment one. So uh, first thing um, is Blog Talk is on typically three nights out of the week that you can uh, look to... uh, Listen to a show. Uh, we have uh, every Friday, of course, a uh, Friday night Sabbath coming out of Babylon. And that uh, this show starts at 5 Eastern, 4 Central, 2 p.m. Pacific time. If you want to listen to the internet, the website is www.blogtalkradio.com slash GOC Church. Uh, we also have on Mondays, we have the Daughters of Zion, which starts at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 Central, 4 p.m. Pacific Time. On Wednesdays, we have the GOCC Search Engine International, hosted by Elder Gaja and Elder Ricard Shiar. Starts at 5 Eastern, 4 Central, 2 p.m. Pacific Time. Um, also, we've got to give out the guest call-in number if you'd like to listen to your telephone. The guest call-in number is 646 200 4309. If at any time you have a comment or question, just simply press the number one. That will put you into the guest call queue. Go to the guest call on the second segment. You'll 
uh, take your calls. If you have any comments, questions, any news you want to add, that will be the time that, for you to speak. On Saturday, we have the uh, lessons that are taught on Ustream. The website for that is www.ustream.tv slash channel slash T-H-E hyphen G-O-C hyphen church. All right. It usually comes on around 8 or 9 a.m. Eastern time. And it's hosted by a car and elder lawyer. Uh, following that, around 2, 3.30 Eastern we have the black flag of Zabai Gabar, Yadrachala, and Indy York. Those lessons are archived, so if you miss the lesson or you want to go back, they're always there in the archives for you to listen to. The website for the church is www.gatheringofchrist.org. The email for the church is gatheringas1 at aol.com. That's for any um, questions you may have. You can send an email to gatheringas1 at aol.com. The phone number for the church is 888-334-3330. All right, speaking of the website, uh, right now we have uh, some businesses that are uh, being uh, offered some services, products through the GOC network. The first business we have is Custom Designs by Sister Riri, which are custom-made Bible covers, meet you some more. We have uh, Shea and Co. Consulting, professional legal advice from Brother Shapat, a book called Recovering from Autism, One Family's Journey of Hope and Healing, Desired Promise, natural products including hair butters, body butters, scrubs, and more. Herbal Health Review, natural health remedies from Dr. Peter First. Essential oils, information on healing, well-being, and more. WS Herbal Health, and Uh, rock the pot naturally with Sister Eliona, natural health diet and lifestyle health. We are pleased to announce the newest member of the GOC Business Network, Exodus, which is herbal gum and powder. All right. So these are the businesses that we currently have under the GOC Network section of heading business directory. If you would like to join the network or you want information, you can send it to email to gocnetaol.com. Right? And, uh, let's make sure, brother, this is that we support those uh, in our communities, um, build our communities up with these small businesses, um, and take our money out of the system and, and put it into our brother's business. If you like a Hebrew ca- uh, calendar, the 2016 calendar is now available. Send it to the gocnet AOL.com. If you're in the Texas area, surrounding the state, GOCC Texas at YML.com is the email address you can reach us. 972-793-7888 is the phone number we can be reached to uh, so reach out to us. Alright, so that's it on the announcements. I'm going to go ahead and get ready for segment one news, current events, Bible prophecy. Abanawa Shabashamayam Kudzashayasham Ka Ohaya Malakwat Ka Sabaa Ratazawan Ka Haya Aisha Bahu Ratazawa Haya Bashamayam Nathanawa Lahong ka yuong Wasalak na wa Kawabwat na wa Kasalak na wa Kawabwat yun na wa Wala ah na wa
Shalom, we're back. We're going to get the uh, that was the Lord's Prayer in Hebrew. We're now going to read it from the English. Uh, we're at Matthew chapter six, verse nine. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the glory. Uh, in the power forever. Amen. And now the uh, scripture for the broadcast is Matthew 24 and 20. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. And the reason this is the scripture for the show is because, of course, the show is titled Friday Night Sabbath. So a lot of people who may not be aware be like, you know, under, you know, a name like Friday Night Sabbath may not make much sense to them. But uh, when we see here in Matthew 24, 20, we see the Sabbath day being sp- spoken prophetically, letting us know that the Sabbath day is is a day that uh, was uh, still looked at uh, in the eye of Christ um, as a day of, of relevance and not a day that no longer existed. And um, when, you, when you get the understanding that the day starts at night, uh, when you go into creation in Genesis chapter 1, then we know that Friday night starts the seventh day of the week, and the Sabbath is to be kept forever. All right, so that's the the uh, scripture for the show. Also, because Christ warned, uh, Matthew 24 was, was the warning to the disciples of what would be a uh, shadow of things to come uh, prophetically, things that would happen. Uh, signs, events leading up to his uh, second coming. And one was war- warning us to prepare that we do not have to flee on the Sabbath, letting us know that the enemy will be looking to, um, you know, plan their attacks against us, their false flags and things of that nature on the Sabbath day when we're resting, observing this day, gathering, um, etc., so we have to keep in mind and be be very vigilant on this day, even though it is a Sabbath, and um, pay particular close to what's going on with the signs. So we like to go into Bible prophecy, news, current events, those type of things, so that when you go into your Sabbath, you're mindful of just how close we are to uh, major prophetic events taking uh, taking shape. All right, so um, a lot of things... I want to talk about tonight um, some things. Of course, we we can't read all the articles on everything that I would like to discuss, but um, nonetheless, just want to cover a, a wide variety of different topics and things that are going on on right now. Uh, the main thing we're going to talk about tonight is the upcoming nuclear war that's uh, that's, that's showing itself. Um, in the news, 
that the mainstream media really is not talking about right now you have the uh the the election the pre- the presidential election for 2016 has pretty much swallowed up all the news for the year and you know i was sitting thinking like you know it, it, it for the past few years it's, it's basically been a, a false flag shooting happening um almost weekly if not bi-weekly at the, at the least and this year so far, you've hardly seen any type of shootings or, or false flags. Things have been pretty quiet. And I've, I've just been, you know, examining this and analyzing this. But, it, you know, what they want people to be totally focused and consumed with is this, this what they call presidential election, which is nothing more than a circus with uh, the characters of the likes of Donald Trump, you know, Hillary Clinton, you know all all these characters that they rolled out to uh you know put in front of the, the the masses as your leaders that will come and save America from its 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 um and return it to its former glory um so they want you totally tuned in to that circus show and in the midst of this um you know they they've managed to um continue to perpetrate and perpetuate the uh race the race war the 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 racial division the civil war everything whether it's the the presidential reality show which they call the presidential election or uh tv shows on tv uh you know news whatever is is being put on the on the television show for you to see is is everything now is is about race right so that's a big thing that's going on right now with the presidential election is you know they're trying to say you know Donald Trump is supported by the Ku Klux Klan, you know, and and, and, and what people have to understand is that they're all supported by the Klan. Every every last member has has, has Klan ties, you know, white supremacy ties, ties, and and, and what it all comes down to is that they could care less about the poor, no matter matter your color, right? For them, it's about the, the royal bloodlines. It's got nothing to do with necessarily with color but more so with DNA but they understand that they can use color they can cause major division amongst the people I mean it, it, whether it's black and white red and blue you have the Democrats and Republicans are represented by the colors of red and blue um, of course the Crips and the blood so they understand that color goes deep when it comes to people because people are carnal people are fleshly so these are things that, that people latch on to Right, but they're dividing the people on all social issues, whether it's uh, you know you know the, the whole sodomite homosexual agenda that's being pushed right now, the tr- you know transgender, the feminist movement, you know men, uh, women versus man, um, you know all of these things are are, are Bible prophecy mentioned in, in Matthew 24 when it talks about um, you know nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom. It's letting you know that, you know, everybody is going to be against everybody. And as long as they can put pit everybody against everybody, you'll fight yourselves. And they don't have to have to work as hard to destroy you or to control you because you're too busy fighting amongst yourself over, um, you know, uh, orchestrated and manufactured crises, which they uh, which is a term that's used as Hegelian dialectic. They, they cause the problem. They wait for the reaction and they give you the solution. Right, so those are some of the things going on right now. Um, when I speak about the nuclear war, um, and I'm going to go into some ar- articles on that, but just reading some of the headlines, this is off the Washington Post. It says North Korea claims it could wipe out Manhattan with a hydrogen bomb. That's one article that's out there. Um, another article you have when it comes to that is. Um, let me find it here real quick. It says, it's just off of freebeacon.com. It says, U.S. says North Korea rhetoric, a prelude, a prelude to attack. Right. And something I also noticed, and this is the reason why, you know, the main part of today's show is going to be about the, the upcoming nuclear war. is because I've never seen a, a time in history where there's been so much nuclear talk, um, nuclear Test, 
that are taking place. Of course, we're familiar with the Iranian nuclear agreement that was made. Um, but you have countries like North Korea testing nuclear missiles, shooting them up uh, and doing tests. You have Iran who is doing tests, intercontinental ballistic missile tests, and, and, and the media putting out um, headlines such as Iran uh, missiles are labeled with the, um, you know, labeled on the missile saying that it plans to wipe Israel off the map. They're saying that this is actually engraved on the missiles as they're launching and testing these missiles off. Um, of course, the last episode we did was on the uh, the, the massive military buildup uh, in the uh, Arabian Peninsula, the biggest uh, Arabian military drill to date called, I think, I believe it was called Northern Thunder. And uh, Russia was saying that if, uh, you know, if, if, if Saudi Arabia and the Arab allies plan to uh, invade Syria with this army, that they would use tactical um, nukes. So you have, you know, Russia and, 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 you know, other countries talking about using tactical nukes. Um, India now is doing nuclear tests and, and, and that's really that's that's really uh something that should uh put you on um high alert because when is when do you ever see India doing too much when it comes to any type of uh, you know military flexing or um you know being in the spotlight militarily but when I seen that and I said okay India now is shooting up missile tests on for nukes so you have all of these countries, China, um, you know, America, all these countries talking about using nukes, tactical nukes, uh, nuclear missile tests. Um, and it's like never before in history have I ever recalled seeing this much talk in, in, in testing uh, of missiles of, of with nukes. Uh, all these massive exercises and drills, you have China, Russia, America, all participating in Pacific Ocean, South China Sea Ocean military drills together. And so you have to ask yourself, do do enemies participate in military drills together? Like China and Russia are supposed to be allies and enemies of America. So since when do enemies get together and do exercises together? So that's to let you know, like, the leaders of these countries are not enemies, right? But they, this is what they've they've done so so long in 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 their movies is show all these countries as enemies to America, the enemies uh, of the East, China, Russia, Iran, North Korea. They show all in all these movies. They're showing that these are the countries and have have done this for you know. Decades in their in their in their Hollywood and in their in their in their in their in their, um, in their news, they this is what they've been showing, um, and it, it's all about psychological programming, right? This is the predictive programming to have it in your mind that this is you know so when it happens you're already programmed to accept the reality. All right, so that's that's uh, something we're going to talk about later. Um, uh, more news. This is breaking news. They looks like they they're saying that they've caught the mastermind behind the Paris attacks. You know, you had the Paris attacks that happened. Um, what was it last year, November thirteenth, Friday the thirteenth? Now they're saying they caught the mastermind today uh, behind this uh, so-called terrorist attack, which we know was a false flag and a hoax. So they're continuing to keep that in your minds, uh, this this constant state of fear and terror uh, of, of ISIS and, and these and these groups that have, are linked in with ISIS and, the, and um, any type of terrorism, so that you'll be in constant fear and you'll be willing to give up your rights to government for them to protect you. But we understand that it's not for protection; it's for control and domination. So you have that's going on right now, and we'll be talking more about. Um, uh, the, the false flag attacks and uh, linking into Paris and, and what's on the horizon when it comes to that. Um, you had uh, a 
a uh, a New York mayor, Bill de Blasio, this week, uh, this past week, signed a, a executive order requiring transgender access to single-sex facilities in New York, basically putting all genders in one bathroom, like saying there's no need to have more than one bathroom. We just need one bathroom, you know, everybody use the same bathroom. Um, also, you know, transgender bathrooms to where, you know, you, you, you don't have to prove your gender, you know, you just, just walk in and, and, you know, it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman in the, in the, in these bathrooms. Um, so th this is an executive order that uh, is, 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 is passed and, that's an, another article on uh, freebeacon.com that you can read when it comes to uh, that executive order. Um, another thing that I saw in the news um, is now they have a tithing app called tithe.ly. And it's, it's an app that you can download to your smartphone and uh, over a thousand churches use this app for people who want to tithe, and it, it's, it's, it's strictly digital for 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 tithing. And, and uh, this is on Bloom, Bloomberg.com. It says the church collection plate goes digital, and it says there really is an app for everything, right? So this is just more of the um, the the segue and the um, transitioning of uh people into the mark of the beast with the with the everything being done digitally now through your smartphone eventually it will be done through your mark of the beast uh, if you if you're wanting to buy or sell you will have to have that etching in the skin or that implant or mark and um you know what better place than to get the people that are in these churches um fully programmed so that they, you know, won't question if it's the mark of the beast because it's become so natural and normal for them to do this that it won't seem as, it won't seem like the mark of the beast, right? So that was something else that I uh, I seen. Another thing, a couple other things, is the the police are looking to. Um, looking to uh, weaponize domestic drones. And remember, a few years ago, it was like 2012, 2011, they said that um, by 2015, there'd be 15,000 drones in the sky over America. And a lot of people were concerned, saying that, you know, oh, well, you know, these drones could be weaponized. And they quickly came out and said, oh, no, they won't be weaponized. You know, these will just be surveillance drones. These will just be drones that just, you know, non-lethal drones. We have to understand and recognize that if you give them an inch, they take a mile. They take, you know, a thousand miles. So now that they got these drones in the sky and they've gotten people used to drones, now here comes the weaponization and the push for weaponizing these drones. All right? So all, all they have to do is get them in the sky and eventually they'll figure a way to get them weaponized. Right. This this is how they incrementally push to complete their agenda. They start small, and it, and it, and it goes from there. Same thing with gun control. They say, oh, it's just for you know gun background checks and this, but understand that once they pass one law, it it, it opens up a a huge gash for a segue of other laws and executive orders to come right in behind. Right. Um, what else? Um, so th those are kind of the uh, some of the headlines that I've I've seen over the last uh, couple of weeks that I wanted to touch on before we actually go into reading the news articles here. So now going into the actual reading of the articles, um, the first article I wanted to read here comes off of endoftheamericandream.com 
It says nuclear war with North Korea coming. March 13, 2016. It says on Sunday, North Korea warned the U.S. that it could wipe out Manhattan with a single hydrogen bomb. And earlier this month, North Korea threatened to make a preemptive and offensive nuclear strike on the United States in response to aggressive military exercises currently being jointly conducted by South Korea and the U.S. military. So right now you have South Korea and America doing military exercises. And because of that, North Korea is now making threats on America, saying it will wipe out New York with a hydrogen bomb. So does nuclear war with North Korea actually pose a significant security risk to this country? Well, according to the Washington Post, the entire west coast of the United States is within reach of, the, of North Korea's intercontinental ballistic missiles. The only question is whether or not North Korea's ultra-paranoid leader Kim Jong-un would ever actually press the button. Most Americans don't realize this, but nuclear war with North Korea is now closer than it has has ever been before. In the past, North Korea's technical capabilities were greatly limited, but now all of that has apparently changed. Just consider what has taken place within just the past few months. The following comes from a timeline that was put together by the Arms Control Association. January 6, 2016, North Korea announces it conducted a fourth nuclear weapons test claiming to have detonated a hydrogen bomb for the first time. Monitoring stations from the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty Organization detect the seismic activity from the test. The type of device tested remains unclear, although experts doubt it was of a hydrogen bomb based on seismic evidence. February 7, 2016, North Korea launches a long-range ballistic missile carrying what it has said is an Earth observation satellite in defiance of United Nations sanctions, barring it from using ballistic missile technology, drawing strong international condemnation from other governments which believe it will advance North Korea's military ballistic missile capabilities. March 2, 2016. The UN Security Council unanimously adopts Resolution 2270 condemning the nuclear test and launch of early 2016 and demanding that North Korea not conduct further tests and immediately suspend all activities related to its ballistic missile program. Resolution 2270 expands existing sanctions on North Korea by adding to the list of sanctioned individuals and entities, introducing new financial sanctions and banning states from supplying aviation fuel and other specified minerals to North Korea. Resolution 2270 also introduces a requirement that U.N. member states inspect all cargo in transit to or from North Korea for illicit goods and arms. In response to these moves, South Korea and the U.S. military have launched the largest military exercises in the history of South Korea. More than 300,000 troops have gathered to simulate an invasion of North Korea and practice the elimination of North Korea's weapons of mass destruction. These military exercises being held over a period of eight weeks. And this is precisely what caused North Korea to threaten us with a preemptive and offensive nuclear strike. So again, I want to examine, of course we're talking about the nuclear war, but let's talk about the civil war talked about the division. You see, you have South Korea versus North Korea. Same people, but divided. And who is in the mix of this division? None other than America. So when you look at divisions in the world, in almost every place, you're going to see America's hand in the middle of this division. Like with these particular anti-Trump rallies and all of this, you have men like George Soros who are sponsoring these anti-Trump rallies. And Donald Trump and George Soros are in some room together sipping tea, toasting, popping champagne, and laughing at people, at people's simple nature. Just laughing. Because they have you thinking that they're against each other. Oh, Donald Trump, oh, he's going to bring America back. 
You know, as everybody's saying, oh, Donald Trump, you know, he he's the he's the, he's the one. But then then I say the same thing about Barack Obama. And what has Obama done? Right? So they constantly put these men up for you to put your faith in to be saviors. But the one man who is the savior, nobody has faith in. Right? But I want I just want to examine the the division. Kingdom versus kingdom tells us. And these are these are the same people. It says Right, so a civil war. It says here, and on Sunday, North Korea boasted that they could reduce Manhattan to ashes with a single hydrogen bomb. Our hydrogen bomb is much bigger than the one developed by the Soviet Union. DPRK, today a state-run outlet, reported Sunday. DPRK stands for the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, North Korea's official name. If this H bomb were to be mounted on an intercontinental ballistic missile and fall on Manhattan and New York City, all the people there would be killed immediately and the city would burn down to ashes. The report said, citing a nuclear scientist naming Cho Hyong Il. I don't know about you, but I find statements such as these to be quite alarming. Earlier this month, Kim Jong un put his nuclear weapons on alert for use at any time, and Reuters is reporting that he just ordered his military to conduct even more nuclear weapon tests. So why is there so little concern about this in the United States? Sometimes it is the enemy that you underestimate the most that ends up being your greatest threat. Meanwhile, in the midst of everything else, a North Korean submarine has gone missing. The North Korean regime lost contact with one of its submarines earlier this week. Three U.S. officials familiar with the latest information told CNN. The U.S. military had been observing the submarine operate off North Korea's east coast when the vessel stopped and U.S. spy satellites, aircraft, and ships have been secretly watching for days as the North Korean Navy searched for the missing sub. The U.S. is unsure if the missing vessel is adrift under the sea or whether it has sunk, the official said, but believes it suffered some type of failure during an exercise. At a time when tensions on the, North, on the, on the Korean Peninsula are near an all-time high, this is very disturbing development. The last thing we need is some sort of trigger event that could cause the North Koreans to want to start pressing buttons. Most Americans don't realize this, but hatred for America is one of the centerpieces of North Korean society. In fact, they have an entire month each year in which they celebrate how much they hate us. The following comes from a New York Post article that was published last June. June is something like Hate America Month in North Korea. Officially, it's called Struggle Against U.S. Imperial Imperialism Month. And more so than usual, it's a time for North Koreans to swarm to war museums, mobilize for gatherings, denouncing the evils of the United States, and join in a general nationwide whipping of an anti-American sentiment. The culmination this year came Thursday, the 65th anniversary of the outbreak of the Korean War with a 100,000-strong rally in Pyong Kim Sung Stadium. If Manhattan actually was reduced to a pile of ashes by a hydrogen bomb, there would be dancing in the streets of Pyong Yang. So let, us not, so let us not underestimate the threat that North Korea poses. They hate us enough to want to completely destroy us. They now have the technological capability of hitting major West Coast cities with nukes, and they have an ultra-paranoid young leader with his hand on the trigger. Meanwhile, we have an increasingly aggressive le leader of our own sitting in the White House that seems to like to yank Kim, Kim Jong-un's chain. If push came to sub shove, North Korea would attempt to hit American targets with nukes. Let's just hope and pray that it does not happen anytime soon. And again, when I talked earlier about them putting this stuff in the movies, what movie did they show a similitude of this? You had the movie called Olympus Has Fallen, where the White House was taken over by North Koreans, and to and, and where they they uh, looked to set off all the nuclear silos, missile silos in America, which would cause nuclear fallout throughout all of America, right? So they they've 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 done the North Korea boogeyman in the movie theater, and then they continue the programming in the mainstream news. 
but this news really is not being talked about. It's you don't really see them speak about this on the news. You, all you see is, a, is the presidential reality show while nuclear war signs are being shown all throughout the world. All these countries are doing nuclear tests and, nu- and, and, and screaming nuclear threats. And the world, you know, snoozes and just looks over it as no big deal or has no idea that it's happening. Um, and again, you see all these countries with these anti-American, all this anti-American sentiment struggle against U.S. imperialism. Iran, the same thing, right? You got all these countries that now America's tenure across the world has built up and it has a rap sheet of being an imperialist colonistic country the bully of the world that goes around bombing, killing terrorizing you know, countries but this is the same way that America was created with the enslavement of a people, with those uh, you know, so-called blacks that were taken from Africa whom we know are the children of Israel and the so-called native Native American Indians, whose land was taken from them, who we know also part of the children of Israel, these people were terrorized. So those forces that are behind America are not but for to 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 steal, kill, and destroy. That's it. And their ultimate steal, kill, and destroy is to to destroy America. This is the reason why. All these countries will join hand in hand and destroy America, as the scriptures tell us in Jeremiah 50, that an array or a multitude of countries will will, will surround America round about. We know the main country will be led by the Medes, but we also know that the the ten horns in Revelation 17 shall, shall burn her with fire. Um which is the uh, European Union. So Europe will 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 have a hand in America's destruction because of course the people the the, the politicians of America and and the, the founders are all the, the sons of Europe, sons and daughters of Europe. The caucus the caucus re, the region, the Khazarian Empire. Right? So America was 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 created for a a purpose and its purpose is coming to an end. Its final purpose is to be destroyed. Right? And North Korea has one of the fourth largest militaries in the world and has nuclear missile capability. So understand that North Korea will play a part in the destruction of America as well. Um when the missiles start flying from all these places that North Korea will also join in on the the, the missile extravaganza. But you ask yourself, how would this happen? How, how a, a country with the greatest military the world has ever seen, how how will this be able to take? How will this be able to take place to a country that, even though it's fallen, even though it's weakened, it still seems like it has a certain level of power that countries aren't going to be able to just come against America and do that. Well, as you read in Bible prophecy, it talks about the plagues. On Babylon in Revelation 18, Jeremiah 50, Jeremiah 51, it talks about the earthquake, the great, the great earthquake that will hit America in Revelation 16, the greatest earthquake the world has ever seen, and this will break the backbone of America. So when you have a country that's been broken down with plague after plague, like like ancient Egypt, right? It will be so weak it will not be able to fight. When you talk about a major earthquake on that scale, you have no power. All the power grids will be down. You'll have n- nuclear fallout because the, the nuclear reactors will not have electricity to keep them cooled. There'll be total chaos, and it'll it'll just be people looking to just survive in America, in a, in a broken America. And America will be a sitting duck ready to be finished off. Right, kind of like 
you know, for those of you who maybe are familiar with, with, with the movie or the game Mortal Kombat, and, and your opponent is sitting there staggering and, 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 is, and is pretty much done, and it says finish him. Finishing blow to America are those nukes that come down. So let's talk about these plagues. As in our in our next article, is the next article also comes off of End of the American Dream, and the title is Never Before Has America Been Hit by So Many Historic Floods in Such a Short Period of Time. The United States has been hit by seven historic floods since the month of September. And the latest one is making headlines all over the planet. This week, nearly two feet of rain triggered record-setting floods in parts of Texas, Louisiana, and Mississippi. And more rain is expected for the area as we move into the weekend. Flooding along one part of the Sabine River has already broken the previous record by more than five feet. And the crisis is far from over. Of course, this just continues a trend that I have been documenting for months now. Never before in U.S. history have we ever seen so many historic floods in such a compressed time frame. And while we're seeing all these floods in America, you have other parts of America like California, which have received no rain, no water, and are becoming barren wastelands with nuclear fallout coming from Japan and Fukushima, methane gas being leaked from California out out of out of the 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 you know crevices in California major wildfires taking place in America and and people are saying well when's the big event going to happen these are major events happening but nobody is paying attention and again America does a good job of making you feel comfortable that everything seems normal in a in a in a forever hotter getting hotter pot of hot water the, the 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 water is getting hot but people don't feel it because they they they've numbed the the people down and because they just they have everything set up on on a on a logistical scale of of um of you know when it comes to bringing in food and water that all the food and water at this much pretty much isn't even being grown in America it's coming from someplace else because if at this rate, with all this flooding and wildfires and all of that, food and, and livestock and animals, all, all that stuff can't be grown. So if you cut off the shipping, supply chains of America, you have no food and water. But as long as those shelves stay stocked, you think everything's normal. It says the area right along the Texas-Louisiana border is a complete and total disaster right now. The following report about what the region is currently experiencing comes from weather.com. This multi-day heavy rain saga, which has dumped up to almost two feet of rain in parts of the south, is still triggering destructive flash flooding and has driven or will drive some rivers to historic levels in the days ahead. Record flooding is already occurring along a stretch of the Sabine River and will move downstream into next week along the Texas-Louisiana border due to record releases from Toledo Bend Reservoir, first put in service in 1966. The river already crushed a previous record crest near Burkeville, Texas, by over five feet, and the crest is headed downstream for the town of Deweyville, Texas, where it may top the previous unofficial record crest from 1884 by over a foot, flooding numerous homes and leaving the town isolated. Let us pray for the people living down there, because what is happening is absolutely tragic. Unfortunately, this is just the latest in a series of historic floods that we have witnessed over the past six months. Let's review. October, Hurricane Joe Quinn never makes landfall, but it tracks up the east coast of the U.S., causing nightmarish rainfall and flooding all over the eastern seaboard. Things were particularly bad in South Carolina, where the governor declared that it was the worst rainfall that many areas of her state had seen in a thousand years. Also, in October in Southern California caused flash flooding that buried some highways and rivers of mud that were up to six feet deep. 
Hundreds of vehicles got buried in the fast-moving mud, and the lifeless body of one man that had his vehicle completely buried by several feet of mud was recovered only after a few days had passed because that is how long it took emergency workers to dig him out. October. Hurricane Patricia was the second most intense tropical cyclone ever recorded in the entire world, and remnants from that storm caused absolutely horrible flooding in parts of Texas. The floodwaters were moving so fast at one point that a freight train was actually knocked entirely off the tracks. November, December, a conveyor belt of violent storms barreled into coastal areas of Oregon and Washington, causing nightmarish flooding in many areas. The resulting landslides and floods made headlines all over the country, and it is going to be a long time before the region fully recovers. In early December, we witnessed the wettest day in the history of Portland, Oregon, and things were also extremely bad at that time up in the Seattle area. January, the middle of the part of the country experienced record-breaking flooding as the calendar rolled over from 2015 to 16. The only thing that people could really compare it to was the Great Flood of 1993, and Missouri Governor Jay Nixon said that some communities saw floodwaters get to places they've never been before. Normally, if the middle of the country is going to see flooding like this, it is going to take place when the snow begins to thaw in the spring. But something like this to happen in the middle of the winter was absolutely unprecedented. Also in January, on the 22nd, one of the worst East Coast blizzards in history slammed into Washington, D.C., New York City, and other major metropolitan areas. More than three feet of snow was dumped on some areas. Hundreds of thousands of people were left without power. And coastal cities all along the eastern seaboard experienced flooding that was described as worse than Hurricane Sandy. It is also interesting to note that this storm was known as Jonas, which is actually a Greek transliteration of the Hebrew name Jonah. Jonah, of course, was a Hebrew prophet that was sent to the capital city of Assyria, Nineveh, to warn that the judgment of God was coming. Well, it turns out that this storm was called Jonas, also hit our capital city, Washington, D.C., on the exact anniversary of Roe v. Wade and the exact location where Roe v. Wade was decided. You see the plagues? The same plagues that we read about in ancient times of ancient Babylon, similar in similar fashion on modern-day Babylon. These, this would have been major, a major you know, known event in ancient times, but in modern times, this is hardly even noticed unless you're one of the people affected. If you're in another part of the country or the world, it's almost like nothing. Because they have Kanye West and Kim Kardashian on TV for you to watch. They got March of Madness and basketball playoffs and Super Bowls and movies and fashion shows. All, all of those things are what matter to people. Not the state of the country, you know, and, and you have some people working two or three jobs just to make ends meet that they don't have time to focus on what's going on, you know, on a, on a massive scale. They're, they're, in, in their world, they're barely holding on, trying to make ends meet. So that, that their world is falling apart just within their little bubble that they've been placed in. All of these historic floods have hit America since the end of September, and now we can add these new floods in Texas, Louisiana, and Mississippi to the list. Never before in all of U.S. history have we ever seen a series of catastrophic floods like this within such a concentrated space of time. Why is this happening? Is this just some sort of bizarre coincidence? Are we looking at the effects of climate change or shifting weather patterns? Could it be possible that we are watching what we are watching is actually the judgment of God, as some are suggesting. The U.S. has never seen anything like this before. Clearly, something is happening. So what do you think that something is? And again, that's that we read about on Babylon and the scriptures and prophecy. And this is a shadow of things to come. This is just, these these natural disasters are just scratching the surface. These are these are picnics, Sunday picnics compared to, to the real natural disasters that are coming. And these are record-breaking natural disasters. 
So can you imagine when the real ones come and hit in the midst of economic collapse, civil war, nuclear fallout, false flag attacks, cyber attacks, martial law, right? This is the judgment on America. The, the, the time has, has come to an end for America's bullying of the world appearing as an innocent lamb. It, it's coming to an end. Which takes us to those are the plagues that are showing themselves. But now we're going to go into the actual backbreaker. This this is what would be the <clears throat> pretty much the straw that breaks the camel's back when it comes to America before its final destruction. This also comes off end of the American dream. It says a new Madrid earthquake is coming and America will be shaken like never before. This is January 28th. 2016, it says here, one moment, most Americans expect the next great earthquake in the U.S. to come on the West Coast, but what if it strikes right down the middle of the country instead? The New Madrid fault zone is six times larger than the San Andreas fault zone in California. One moment. It says the new Madrid fault zone is six times larger than the San Andreas fault zone in California, and it covers portions of Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, Missouri, Arkansas, Kentucky, Tennessee, and Mississippi. Back in 1811 and 1812, a series of absolutely devastating earthquakes along the New Madrid Fault Zone opened very deep fissures in the ground, caused the Mississippi River to run backwards in some places, and were reportedly felt as far away as Washington, D.C. and Boston. All right, give me one moment here. It says, um, they were the strongest earthquakes ever recorded east of the Rocky Mountains, and scientists tell us that it is only a matter of time before we experience similar quakes. In fact, the U.S. Geological Survey has admitted that the New Madrid Fault Zone has the potential for larger and more powerful quakes than previously thought, and the number of significant earthquakes in the middle part of the country has more than quintupled in recent years. Someday, perhaps without any warning, an absolutely massive earthquake will strike the New Madrid Fault. Thousands of Americans will die, tens of thousands of structures will be completely destroyed, and millions of people will find themselves homeless. Unlike on the West Coast, buildings within the New Madrid uh fault zone are typically not constructed to withstand major earthquakes. If we were to see the types of earthquake that we saw a little over two centuries ago, it would be a disaster unlike anything that any of us have ever known. The following comes from WKRN, and it describes what those earthquakes back in 1811 and 12 were, were like. Can you believe that in the winter of 1811 and 12, a series of earthquakes in, in northwest Ten Tennessee shook the ground so hard? that church bells rang in the East Coast and the sidewalks parked in Washington, D.C. The sitting president, James Madison, was even awakened in the middle of the night by the shaking of the White House. In Tennessee and surrounding states, the early settlers and Native American Indians were terrified by the shaking. Large fissures opened up in the ground, and some witnessed the Mississippi River appearing to flow backwards. It is believed that the quakes shook an area ten times larger than that, impacted by the 7.8 San Francisco earthquake of 1906. Some of the giant cracks that opened up in the ground were up to five miles long. 
and the stench of the fire and brimstone hung in the air for months afterwards. Fortunately, the middle of the country was not heavily populated in 1811 and 1812, so the overall amount of damage was not that great. Also think back then they didn't have the the infrastructure that America has, the grid based strictly on uh electrical grid and the and the and the um the supply chain, the logistical supply chain of, of moving goods, food, water, supplies, you know, people were living off the land, where now people are living off shelves. So when that gets broken, those things are broken, then what? It says the following comes from Smithsonian.com. The Midwest was sparsely populated and deaths were few, but eight-year-old Godfrey uh, Lezier saw the ground rolling in waves. Michael Brom observed the river suddenly rise up like a great loaf of bread to the height of many feet. Sections of riverbed, of, of riverbed below the Mississippi rose so high that part of the river ran backward. Thousands of fishers ripped open fields and geysers burst from the earth, spewing sand, water, mud, and coal high into the air. Needless to say, if such a disaster happened today, the damage would be absolutely catastrophic. This is something that government officials have studied, and their conclusions are rather sobering. In a report filled in November 2008, the U.S. Federal Emergency Management Agency, or FEMA, warned that a series of a serious earthquake in the New Madrid seismic zone could result in the highest economic losses due to natural disaster in the United States, further predicting widespread and catastrophic damage across Alabama, Arkansas, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Mississippi, Missouri, and particularly Tennessee, where a 7.7 magnitude quake or greater would cause damage to tens of thousands of structures affecting water distribution, transportation systems, and other vital infrastructure. Do you remember how traumatized people were when a few thousand Americans were killed on 9-11? Well, how would the country react to a disaster that killed 100,000 Americans instantly? A few years ago, the federal government held a major five-day simulation known as National Level Exercise 11 that attempted to portray what a major new Madrid earthquake would look like. In May, the federal government simulated an earthquake so massive it killed 100,000 Midwesterners instantly and forced more than 7 million people out of their homes. At the time, national-level Exercise 11 went largely unnoticed. The scenario seemed too far-fetched. States like Illinois and Missouri are in the middle of a tectonic plate, not at the edge of one. A major quake happens there once every several generations. Could you imagine what what that would mean for our nation? In addition to the human toll, financial markets would completely collapse, key infrastructure throughout the region would be totally destroyed, and transportation on and across the Mississippi River would be brought to a standstill. According to international insurance giant Swiss Re, if the 1811 and 1812 New Madrid earthquakes were to happen today, the economic losses alone would be in the hundreds of billions of dollars. A series, a series of big shakes of the sort, last seen in 1811 and 1812, would cause about $300 billion in damage, Swiss Ray says. The cost would be double the damage from Hurricane Katrina in New Orleans in 2005. Houses, especially brick ones, would collapse. Buildings would sink sideways into liquefying earth. Bridges might tumble into the rivers. The route of the Mississippi River could change, as it did in the the last big quake. People would die, perhaps by the thousands, being mainly a property reinsurer. Swiss Reed didn't estimate the human toll. It is also important to remember that there are 15 nuclear reactors along the new Madrid fault zone. Remember, we talked about those nuclear reactors. If If the electrical grid went down, but you have these nuclear reactors sitting on fault zones, sitting on earthquake lines, per, uh, um, specifically and purposefully built on earthquake lines, fault, fault lines. If a major earthquake did hit that area, we could be looking at Fukushima times 15. 
Scientists tell us that there is a very deep scar in the Earth in the region that makes the New Madrid Fault Zone mechanically weaker than much of the rest of North America. The following comes from Wikipedia. The faults responsible for the New Madrid seismic zone are embedded in a subsurface geological feature known as the real foot rift that formed during the breakup of the supercontinent Rodinia in the neuro uh, protozoic era about 750 million years ago. The resulting rift system failed to split the continent but has remained in Alagochen, a scar or a zone of weakness deep underground. And its scientists and its ancient faults appear to have made the Earth's crust in the New Madrid area mechanically weaker than much of the rest of North America. The relative weakness is important because it would allow the relatively small east-west com compressive forces associated with the continuing continental drift or the, of the North American plate to reactivate old faults around New Madrid, making the area unusually prone to earthquakes in spite of it being far from the nearest tectonic plate boundary. I believe that a major New Madrid earthquake is coming. That is one of the reasons why I included such an earthquake in my novel. Those that choose to live in that region are literally sitting on top of a ticking time bomb, and at some point it is going to blow. Of course, I wouldn't want to be living on the West Coast right now either. The shaking of our planet continues to intensify, and this is going to cause great tragedies in the U.S. during the years ahead. The warning signs are all around us. In 2015, the state of Oklahoma shattered their all-time record for earthquakes in a single year, and volcanoes that were thought to be totally dormant are now erupting again all over the planet. A great shaking is coming to America very soon. I hope that you are ready. Speaking of Oklahoma, Oklahoma now is the earthquake capital of America. Right? And that would be something that nobody would ever have imagined. But again, when we look at prophecy, Matthew 24, earthquakes in diverse places, places that have never or known to have seen earthquakes will become earthquake ridden. And, America, and Oklahoma sits in the middle of the New Madrid Fault and the fault in, uh, on the West Coast in the, in the San Andreas, which takes us to our next article. And again, this is all Bible prophecy. So when we can look in the news and tie it to Bible prophecy, this is not a coincidence. This is not something that is just, hey, it just happens to be the case. Or it may happen. People have been warned. Signs have been shown. All right? You will have no excuses for saying that you did not know for those who continue to want to, you know, just let it fall by the wayside, right? So it takes us to our next article, also off of endoftheamericandream.com. Coming soon, this is what would happen if a 9.0 earthquake hit the Ca Cascadia subduction zone, March, 9, uh, March 6, 2016. If you live in the Pacific Northwest, you have probably already heard of the Cascadia subduction zone. It is where the Juan de Fuca plate meets the North American plate and it stretches approximately 700 miles from northern Vancouver Island all the way down to northern California. The subduction zone is capable of producing far more powerful earthquakes than the much more famous San Andreas Fault in southern California. And scientists tell us that it is only a matter of time before another continent-killing earthquake hits this area. And when it does hit, it will be far more worse than any other natural disaster that the United States has ever seen up to this point. So are, are we getting the picture here that all of these locations seem to point to being the natural disaster far worse than any other that America has ever seen? And you're seeing these it, all over America in different parts of America, right? We talked about in times past the uh, Yellowstone. You have that situation going on. What about what happened with the BP oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico, right? That extends all the way up to the New Madrid fault line, right? So you have these danger zones all over America, and they've built nuclear reactors on top of these danger zones, 
it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see that that, that you know what what is what is, what is shaping and, and form what has been you know planned because we know that harp and their fallen angel technology they have the ability to cause earthquakes that they're doing a lot of fracking digging in the earth opening up these fault lines um you know, weakening them. According to CNN, the largest earthquake in the continental U.S. took place along the Cascadia subduction zone on January 26, 1700, and one of the reasons why it is considered to be far more dangerous than other West Coast faults is because it is also capable of producing massive tsunamis. So that's one thing different than New Ma- the New Madrid fault is that it's in the middle of the country. But with with the fault lines on the west coast, you're right by the ocean. So you're talking about massive tsunamis along with the earth opening up, swallowing people up, sinkholes, buildings falling on top of you. And again, where do they show us this with their programming in their Hollywood, and, and, you know, straight out of California with the, the movie San Andreas, other movies, right? Psychological conditioning. According to CNN, the largest earthquake in the continental U.S. Uh, okay, we just read that. It says uh, producing massive tsunamis. The Cascadia can del- deliver a quake that's many times stronger, plus a tsunami. Cascadia can make an earthquake almost 30 times more energetic than the San Andreas to start with. And then it generates a tsunami at the same time, which the side-by-side motion of the San Andreas can't do it said Chris Goldfinger, a professor of geophysics at Oregon State University. The Cascadia is capable of delivering a 9.0 magnitude quake, an awesome show of force by Mother Nature. So what would that look like? What would a 9.0 magnitude quake that also produced a huge tsunami due to the highly populated northwest coast? According to an article in The New Yorker, the head of the FEMA division that oversees Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Alaska says that everything west of Interstate 5 will be toast. If the entire zone gives way at once, an event that seismologists call a full margin rupture, the magnitude will be somewhere between 8.7 and 9.2. That's the very big one. Time of shaking has caused, excuse me, has ceased, and the tsunami has receded, the region will be unrecognizable. Kenneth Murphy, who directs FEMA's Region X, the division responsible for Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Alaska, says, our operating assumption is that everything west of I-5 will be toast. In the Pacific Northwest, everything west of I-5 covers some 140,000 square miles, including Seattle, Tacoma, Portland, Eugene, Salem, the capital city of Oregon, Olympia, the capital of Washington, and that's an interesting name uh, to mention in here. It's Olympia. Speaking of Olympus, has fallen, and some seven million people. Like I said earlier, it would be far more, far worse than any natural disaster that we have ever experienced in the history of the U.S. up until now. And it could happen at literally any moment. In fact, many scientists believe that we are way overdue for a continent alternating earthquake along the Cascadia subduction zone. Tensions has been building up there for a very long time, and at some point, that tension will be released. A recent piece by Adam Rothstein gives us an idea of what the first few moments of such a quake might look like in the city of Portland, Oregon. Uh, uh, Cacophony swells from the city as it is howling in response to the Earth's call. Car alarms, shattering glass, the thudding of bricks popping out of buildings, uh, uh, building facades. Humans screaming in fright and far off, echoes of what sound like dumpsters clattering to the ground from the jaws of garbage trucks. It is the sound of shifting foundations and collapsing masonry, continuously a roar increasing from every direction. It is the sound of the living surfaces that a city takes for granted being un, becoming undone. Since we have not experienced such an earthquake in our lifetimes, it is easy to assume that one will never happen. But that is not what the scientists are telling us. <clears throat> In fact, they insist that the odds of a continent-rending earthquake in the near future are actually quite good. The Pacific Northwest is due for a continent-rending earthquake. 
experts believe the odds of a big one happening in the next half century are about one in three. The odds of a very big one, roughly one in ten, and that, in either case, were a disastrously, we are d- disastrously unprepared. And let us not forget the, that the Cascadia subduction zone sits directly along the Ring of Fire, and the Ring of Fire has started to become much more active in recent years. In addition, if the region starts to become more size, uh, seismically active, there is also a very real possibility that we could see a full-blown eruption of Mount Rainier, which has been described as the most dangerous mountain in America. So you have that scenario going on uh, there also. Let us hope that we have much, as much time as possible before our nation has to deal with such calamities. But the cold, hard truth is that we are certainly not helping matters by acting so wickedly. If we continue to do the same things that we have been doing, it is only a matter of time before the judgment of God comes to our land in a major way. We are killing millions of babies, harvesting their body parts, and oxidizing those body parts off to the highest bidder. Too many Americans that may seem like old news, but I assure you that this is not old news to God. I don't think that it was any incident that the series of undercover Planned Parenthood videos that were released last year came out when they did. We were being shown our guilt, and we were being given one last chance to repent. Speaking of Planned Parenthood and that coming out, what this reminds me of, right, because we know Planned Parenthood is put in black and minority areas, these, these Planned Parenthood centers for people to come in and get abortions, which we know these people are the children of Israel. When you go back to ancient Egypt, did not the same thing happen? Did they not have their Planned Parenthood? Even though it wasn't called Planned Parenthood. But were the Egyptians not murdering newborn babies, male babies, Hebrew babies, before the judgment was brought down on Egypt? So we, we, we're seeing all these parallels in modern times with America. It's something that just came to my mind reading this information here. There was a con- congressional hearing about this last Wednesday. The following comes from cnsnews.com. Have we reached a point in our society where there effectively is an Amazon.com for human parts, entire babies? Representative Diane Black asked the witnesses at a special hearing on bioethics and fetal tissue on Wednesday. Dr. Gerard Kevin Donovan, a pediatrician and bio thesis at Georgetown University responded that the practice of using tissue from aborted babies for government-funded research shocks my conscience and it should shock the conscience of the nation. Unfortunately, the buying and selling of harvested baby parts does not shock the conscience of our nation. In fact, most surveys show that an overwhelming percentage of the American people want to continue giving hundreds of millions of tax dollars to Planned Parenthood each year, even though they have been doing this. Since we have not responded to God's calls to repent, all that is left is for him to shake us. And without a doubt, the shaking is coming soon. And without a doubt, the shaking is coming soon. And I want to read the shaking out of the scriptures, Bible prophecy. The scientists are telling us, and now we're going to go to the Bible to show that the Bible also tells us for those who may not believe or for those who may think that America is not Babylon. Let's see what the scriptures have to say about this great earthquake. Um, Because when you look, we have, you know, the Cascadia zone in the the Pacific Northwest. You've got um, San Andreas, the New Madrid uh, Yellowstone, all these zones and fault lines that if an earthquake happened, they're telling you just the massive trauma one earthquake could cause in one area, in one zone. Imagine if earthquakes happened on all these zones at once. Because if you look around the world, earthquakes are happening everywhere but where? But America. Right? You haven't seen any major earthquakes in America. So the tension is building up. The bubble is 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 expanding to its, its its 
biggest energetic expand, expanding it can expand before it pops to get the biggest bang for your buck. So let's read it out of the scriptures. Revelation 16 and 18. And there were voices and thunders and lightnings. And there was a great earthquake such as was not since men were upon the earth. So mighty an earthquake and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts. And the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the wrath of the fierceness of his wrath. Right. And we were just reading in these articles where the author of these articles were saying that because America's unrepentant nature, that God's judgment is coming with the plagues and with these earthquakes. And we're reading it right here in scripture. Great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath, recompense for all of what America has done. Nobody wants nobody wants to examine what America has done. And people want to say, well, this is just what America has become. No, America has always been this. But because you weren't there in the beginning, and because a lot of this history isn't being taught anymore, and maybe it doesn't affect you because you weren't a slave, whether you were an ancestor of a slave or you were you were that that's not your race you're of a different race right it it, it doesn't comprehend in your mind that, that that america has always been wicked can't build a city on blood the scripture says woe to a city that's built upon blood verse 20 and every island fled away and the mountains were not found so even the mountains and the islands or around and consist of America will be gone. They will fall into the ocean. The the Rocky Mountains will be gone. They'll be underwater. This is and this is, you know it, this is not even any room for anybody to debate what this is talking about. When you read these articles, it's crystal clear. And to even bring more edification. The U.S. Navy has a future naval map of America, and it shows America in th almost three parts, with water coming in and separating America into three parts. And this is just a uh, hypothetical, you know, visualization by the Navy. They don't know exactly what it's going to look like, but they have an idea that it's going to be broken in, into similar fashion. Right, so they they have this information. They may not have 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 distributed to you in your classrooms, at your universities or in your 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 free Masonic churches, but this is what they uh, what they know, because again, Satan has these 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 inventions, these fallen angel inventions that can control weather and cause earthquakes, volcano eruptions, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <clears throat> Right, so as we see America continuing its destruction in the earth, causing more wars, wanting to start war in Syria, wanting to start war with Iran, wanting to start war in, in the Korean Peninsula, wanting to start war with Russia and China, all of this is 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 a narrative because in order to go to war, you must sell it to the people that there is a boogeyman or a rival that you must go to war against. Right, so that they can bring their agenda full swing in the destruction of America to have all these countries join together to destroy America. That that's that's the uh that that's that's what the uh, the plan is. All right, so um we're gonna take a quick break and uh play some commercials, but we will come back to some more news, um, finishing up, uh, you know, what we're talking about here. 
So uh, make sure you stay tuned. We'll be right back. Again, you're listening to Friday Night Sabbath coming out of Babylon here on Blog Talk Radio for the Gathering of Christ Church. We'll be right back. If you have serious health challenges or just want a full body tune up, then pay a visit to barakapar-naturally.org. Barakapar means bless and heal in Hebrew, and this is exactly what our holistic, natural approach to health will do for you. Your body has been designed by the Most High to correct and heal even the most severe illnesses using full body cleansing and detox protocols in combination with whole foods, herbs, natural supplements, pure drinking water and a stress-reducing lifestyle positive thoughts and prayer. We use tried and tested natural methods to identify and address any health challenge using a simple, easy to follow, personalized health program designed specifically for you. We can offer an initial one hour health session followed by a full 28 day follow up plan which includes support by email, Skype or telephone. Further ongoing support is available as required to assist you on your health journey. We can provide you with a health and lifestyle education that will position you on the road to excellent health. So if you've tried all the hype, medicines, doctors and drugs, and failed to get the results you need, it's time to do something different. Why not use a proven natural healing program that has provided great results for many that have used it? We're not here to sell you supplements. We're here to show you how to get your health back and keep it. Go to barakaparnaturally.org Spell www.b-a-r-a-c-k-r-a-p-a-h hyphen naturally n-a-t-u-r-a-l-l-y dot org. Shalom, brothers and sisters at GOCC. This is Pastor Truman Burst, Master Herbalist, for over 50 years, helping all GOCC members, always at no charge, answering your questions about natural remedies and health. We're getting great results. Give us a call at 541-981-2520. 541-981-2520. Email Truman at HealthHerbs.com. T-R-U-M-A-N at H-E-A-L-T-H-H-E-R-B-S dot com. Skype is Master Herbalist. Ustream is Truman the Herbalist. In Jesus Christ's name I pray, faithfully praising the Most High. Amen. All right, Shabbat Shalom. Going to finish up. We've got a couple more articles here I would like to read. Um, We spoke about Paris earlier and how they just uh, are now coming with the uh, more um, propaganda and programming to further their terrorist agenda of, and, and uh, you know, continuation of this uh, so-called terror group called ISIS, where they got they caught this guy who was a mastermind of the Paris attacks, so that you'll continue to think that it was real, and to continue to remember what happened, right? Well, not too long ago. Um. Let me get it here. Not too long ago, you had something come up in the media. Matter of fact, I think it was this week. <clears throat> oh, it was last week. This comes off Daily Mail. It says, English-speaking ISIS jihadi warns America they will be attacked very soon and by Allah's permission do to your country what we did to Paris. Narrator warns America that ISIS will kill 
slaughter and burn your people. Jihadi tells U.S. it can expect an atrocity similar to the massacre in Paris. 130 were massacred in wave of shootings and bombings in French capital. The English speaker says we will attack you very soon with anything we lay our hands on. Right? March 9th, 2016. An English-speaking ISIS jihadi has warned America they will be attacked very soon and by Allah's permission due to your country what we did to Paris. In a chilling new ISIS video, he warns the U.S. and President Barack Obama that the terror group will kill, slaughter, and burn your people. The jihadi tells America it can expect an atrocity similar to the massacre in Paris in November, in which 130 people were murdered in a wave of shootings and suicide bomb attacks. The narrator speaks English as he delivers his disturbing threat, but it is not known whether he is British. Footage begins with the title of the video, A Message to America from the Islamic Caliphate Supporters. The man says, Paris isn't far from you. We will, by Allah's permission, do to your country what we did to Paris. We will kill, slaughter, and burn your people. Inshallah, God willing, we will attack you very soon with anything we lay our hands on. Against a backdrop of footage from conflicts in the Middle East and harrowing scenes from the Paris attack, the narrator says, your dogs of Rome, or you dogs of Rome, Kerry and Obama, haven't you learned your lesson yet? Fighting the Islamic Caliphate state is making you lose lots of wealth and even losing the lives of your army as well as your people. He also makes reference to cyber attacks on the terror group and attempts to shut down their online operation. No matter how many times you delete our accounts or chase our places, no matter how you fight us, we are still here and we will support the Islamic Caliphate State. According to The Sun, the video cuts to older footage of Jihadi John killed in a U.S. drone strike last year wearing a, uh, a balaclava and standing over his prisoners. In January, ISIS threatened an attack on Britain so horrific it would turn children's hair white. The terror group warned the UK will suffer the iron, the, excuse me, the lion's share of the slaughter it intends to wield in Europe, according to its Arabic language newspaper Al Naba. It comes after 130 people were slaughtered by ISIS terrorists in Paris on November 13th last year. Jihadists gunned down revelers enjoying nights out in cafes and bars tried to bomb the Stade de France during an international football match that massacred scores of concert goers at the Bataclan Music Theater. And, and speaking of that, what happened in Paris? You had a, you got the uh, Eagles of Death Metal uh, main uh, band member, the lead singer, coming out saying that Paris was a false flag. What happened there was 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 engineered. I mean, I, of course, you know he's probably in on it, so he's playing some role in coming out and saying that, but that's something else that was recently came out in the media. But um, so we see ISIS making threats to America and the United Kingdom. And this comes right in a very peculiar time of some major programming. What major programming am I referring to? How about the movie that just came out, London is Fallen, where it shows, shows terrorists in London you know, doing pretty much what ISIS is saying they're going to do and saying that they're going to do the same to America. So all this is, is predictive programming, conditioning, getting you ready for the next false flag for when it happens, for, you know, to complete whatever agenda that they need, laws they need to pass, control they need to take up, right? Because ISIS is the CIA, MI6, MI5, Israeli Mossad, all of these secret governmental agencies are the ones behind <clears throat> this stuff. You know, all of, all of these operations, which, you know, again, are, are, are false flag hoaxes, don't happen the way they say they happen. <clears throat> and they've been doing these false flags throughout all of history. But it was Messiah in 70 A.D. 
with Rome taking down um, Jerusalem in 70 A.D., but it, it actually started in 66 A.D., uh, going back to 60 A.D., when you had the uh, Nero burn down buildings in Rome and blame it on the Jews so that he could now have a, 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 a uh, patriotic support of, of his Roman citizens to now go against the people he blamed as terrorists in Jerusalem for this burning down of buildings. You had the same thing happen in 1933 with the Reichstag building with uh, Hitler in Germany, blaming it on, uh, I forget which country, I think it was Austria, so that he could get all the power in Germany to then go and do what he did in, in Europe, which was all, again, part of their plan. Leading up to current day false flags with 9-11 so that they could go into Afghanistan, into Iraq, to get the people patriotic, emotional, to, 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 to give full power to the government to do whatever they need to do to to go after these, uh, you know, these terrorists that have attacked their country, and there is um, more to come. They're 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 getting ready for the next the next ones that they're going to pull. Whether it's on uh, the level of 9/11 or the smaller, you know, more more smaller ones that they're just continuing to keep it going, or whether it's ones that uh, are are Bigger than 9/11. Just know that this is um, this is what they're uh, putting into the minds of the people. To constantly keep it on the media, uh, on the news, and uh, keep these stories going. You know, keep them spaced out, but keep them going. Nonetheless, the reason why, you know, the Paris situation, you know, is 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 now being um, brought back into the spotlight because the mastermind behind this event. Right. And this takes us to our last article. Which comes off of end of the American Dream dot com. And for uh you know, those out there that are listening, you, you wanna know where to get good news and, and good uh you know if you can't, or if you can't tell already, that you know the main news source that I go to, to to bring out a lot of things on this show is off of endoftheamericandream.com. I mean, just the title in itself of the website says it all. The uh, the uh, the owner of the website is a, is a Christian, and um, I'm not sure what his stance is on understanding biblical prophecy when it concerns America, but. He says it in so many words that, that America's Babylon. He, he may not even realize it, but uh, it, it comes out nonetheless. And a lot of the information is is, is right on with, with with prophecy and uh, concerning America and also the world. So, you know, definitely um, you can go there to get uh, a lot of great news. Um, but. Um, Let's get to this last article. It is the title, Why Threaten North Korea and China? Would Obama start a war to stay in office? Hmm. Remember, we've uh, we've talked about that, saying that Obama is, is the last president. Here, here we are. We find ourselves in the, in the last year of his so-called presidency, right? March 7th, 2016. Is Obama, Barack Obama, trying to start a war? And will that war be used as an excuse to stay in office once his term is over? Late in his second term, Obama is starting to become extremely aggressive with the rest of the world. He just angered China by selling an aircraft carrier task force past disputed islands in the South China Sea. 
He is provoking North Korea by simulating an invasion of that nation during a military exercise that is going to involve more than 300,000 troops. And he is backing Saudi Arabia and Turkey as they make moves that could very well start World War III in the Middle East. If a war did begin that could give Obama the excuse that he needs to exercise his emergency powers, and that could potentially include suspending the election that is scheduled for November. I know that all of this sounds a little bizarre, but it would help to explain Obama's extremely aggressive behavior lately. For example, why is the U.S. military risking a major incident on the Korean Peninsula? North Korean leader Kim Jong-un is about as paranoid as they come, and he is extremely alarmed by the massive military exercise that is about to begin in South Korea. More than 300,000 troops are gathering for what is being billed as the biggest military exercise in the history of that nation. Reportedly, U.S. and South Korean forces plan to simulate an invasion of North Korea and practice the elimination of North Korea's weapons of mass destruction. In response to these exercises, Kim Jong-un has placed his nuclear weapons on standby for use at any moment. And he is warning that North Korea may launch a preemptive and offensive nuclear nuclear strike. North Korea warned it would make a preemptive and offensive nuclear nuclear strike in response to joint U.S.-South Korean military exercise that began Monday. The news was announced in a statement by the National Defense Commission of North Korea and published in the state-run Korean Central News Agency. As the joint military exercises to be staged by the enemies are regarded as the most undisguised nuclear war drills aimed to infringe upon the sovereignty of the the DPRK, its military counteraction will be more preemptive. An offensive nuclear strike to cope with them, the statement read. I don't care how crazy someone is, if they have nuclear weapons and they threaten to hit the U.S. with a preemptive nuclear strike, I'm going to get alarmed. Remember, North Korea did claim to successfully test a hydrogen bomb in January, and the North Koreans did successfully launch a satellite into orbit in February. The North Koreans absolutely hate us. In fact, hatred for the U.S. is one of the pillars of their society. I know that it may sound strange to many Americans, but it is true. If you can believe it, each year they actually have an entire month during which hatred for America is celebrated. Tensions on the Korean Peninsula are running extremely high, and a single hydrogen bomb could potentially kill millions of people. So why risk an incident? Why provoke North Korea more than necessary? Meanwhile, the Obama administration has been provoking China in the South China Sea. Yet it is a problem that China has seized control of several important islands in the Spratly and Paracel Island chains. But there are other ways to handle this crisis rather than trying to show how tough you are. Last month, China deployed service-to-air missile systems on the disputed islands. Obama's response was to sell an aircraft carrier task force past the island to see if China would start shooting it. The following comes from an article about this incident that was posted by the Navy Times. The U.S. Navy has dispatched a small armada to the South China Sea. The carrier John C. Stennis, two destroyers, two cruisers, the seventh flagship have sailed into the disputed waters in recent days, according to military officials. The carrier strike group is the latest show of force in the tense region with the U.S. asserting that China is militarizing the region to guard its excessive territorial claims. Stennis is joined in the region by the cruisers uh, Antietam and Mobile Bay and the destroyers Chung Hoon and Stockdale. The command ship Blue Ridge, the floating headquarters of the Japan-based 7th Fleet, is also in the area en route to port visit in the Philippines. Stennis deployed from Washington State on January 15th. Do we really want to go to war with China over these islands? The first time we sailed a military vessel through those waters after China had claimed those islands, a Chinese state-run newspaper boldly declared that China is not frightened to fight a war with the U.S. in the region. Most Americans don't realize this, but our relationship with China is rapidly going downhill. There is more to this than just the South China Sea. Without a doubt, 
this is a major point of contention as far as far as the Chinese government is concerned. At the same time, we keep getting closer to a World War III erupting in the Middle East. Last month, defense ministers from 49 different nations met in Brussels to discuss a ground invasion of Syria. And since that time, forces have been massing in northern Saudi Arabia and southern Turkey. If a ground invasion of Syria does take place, the goal would be to go to Damascus and take down the Assad regime. That would put coalition forces in direct conflict with Iran, Hezbollah, and most importantly, the Russians. It could very easily be the spark that sets off World War III, but Saudi Arabia, Turkey, and their allies will never go ahead with the direct approval of the Obama administration. Barack Obama does not need all of these flashpoints to erupt in order to evoke his emergency powers. He just needs one of them. Throughout American history, presidents have always had emergency powers. But since 9-11, these powers have been greatly, given the right circumstances, a U.S. president could now essentially declare himself or herself a dictator for the duration of the crisis. Of course, the word dictator would never actually be used, but that would be the reality of the situation. And if we had a national emergency that was bad enough, Barack Obama would have the authority to postpone or suspend the upcoming election. Let us hope and pray that that does not happen. But the truth is that such a scenario could actually take place. Hopefully what we are witnessing around the globe right now are not attempts by Obama to artificially manufacture such a crisis. Let us hope and pray that when the time is up, that Obama is ready to gracefully move into retirement. And the word I would use is not that Obama is provoking anybody, but this is the narrative that's being pushed to make it look this way, to put in the minds of the people who don't understand things from a higher level of understanding that ultimately these leaders have a bigger agenda than the population of the world, even though that is one of their main agendas. Their agenda is to fight what's coming out the sky. Another reason uh, Hollywood has been making all of these alien movies and alien TV shows. Got another one coming out, Independence Day. Uh, I think think it's called Resurgence. Coming out this July. Right? So they'll make you think that they're fighting each other and they, they, Obama and Putin hate each other and they're enemies, but Again, why are they doing military exercises together (laughs) if they are against each other? But we notice and see America's military almost everywhere in the world, on every front ready for war, whether it's the Middle East, whether it's along the Asian areas, South China Sea, uh, Korea, um, everywhere where America basically is, is, is not allied, they are positioning military forces and weaponry for war. So these are all signs. And again, it doesn't it won't take much for Obama to stay in office. And with you have the circus show going on in the election and the and the and the scandals Notice they put that show out to scandal and, and dealing with the politics of American government scandals that plague Hillary Clinton that they've that they've uh, created that narrative, which is a total hoax. But they roll that card out, disqualify Hillary Clinton. Donald Trump speaks for himself. He, he dis- he'll disqualify himself just on the character they've created him to be, right? And, and w- w- with the racial wars. You know, you have that situation that can suspend the election, you know, civil unrest. So you, you take your pick. 
take your pick of which event that you want to say can cause a suspension of the election where Obama can evoke emergency powers. But imagine if all of them happen at once, including the natural disasters. This is the reason why things are quiet in 2016. All eyes are focused on what's happening with the election. This is the calm before the storm. And this information isn't being talked about in the mainstream media, but if you're following it real time along the alternative lines, even though it's being put out through websites like CNN and Daily Mail, they're still reporting on it. But they know people aren't going on the Internet looking for news like that. They're keeping it off the TV because people run to that TV to get fed. Right. But we have access to this information uh, alternatively and see it and see the signs. And we have to take a special caution of preparation spiritually to survive what's coming um, because we know you know ultimately what it's coming down to is the mark of the beast all of this is leading to the mark of the beast um, and, and operating within that society um, once they have in place um, they, they, they've, they've, uh, they pretty much have uh, complete control over the world over people. Um, so um, all the information is out there. All the signs are there. Um, those that have the understanding, eyes to see and ears to hear, will have the understanding to know what it is, what's going on, um, the things that have been prophesied in the scriptures, um, the things that are uh, been, been brought out through the church, that we, we, we're, we're linking real time with the news and the Bible prophecy to show that this is exactly what the Bible is saying. It's right there. All right. And um, the best thing that we can do is take preparation spiritually to be, uh, you know, given the, uh, the grace and, and mercy to escape these times, to, to, to gather ourselves together O nation not desired to be hidden in these times from the face of the Most High's wrath. Right? So, it's a, 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 time, a time of repentance. We have the past coming up. And, um, you know, we had to really dig deep into the spirit of the Most High and His Son. And, um, and link into that. That will be our, that, that, Spirit is greater than any technological equipment we can put our hands on, any GPS, navigation, cell phone, communication, none of that. The, the Spirit of the Most High, the Holy Spirit, will guide us into the places we need to be, like, it, like the angels guide us out of Sodom and Gomorrah. Right? The Most High always guides his elect, his chosen, out of harm's way. But these, but these people that are guided out are those who are righteous, not who's built up the most military uh, stockpiles, built up the most, uh, you know, uh, food and water in their homes, who's bought the most gold and silver. That's not, those aren't the people that's going to survive this. All right. It, it's those who who stockpile spiritual, uh, you know, s spiritual wealth um, through, their, through their works and their faith. All right, so that is the uh, end of segment one, and we're going to go ahead and get ready for segment two, which is speaking to the to to you brothers and sisters out there. If you'd like to speak, the, the guest call the number is six four six two hundred forty three zero nine. Just press one. All right, Shabbat Shalom. We're back uh, again. You're listening to. Friday Night Sabbath coming out of Babylon on Blog Talk Radio for the Gathering of Christ Church. We're going into segment two. Uh, we're going to open up the car line. So, if you have any comments, questions, any news you want to bring out, anything, you know, 
didn't cover you'd like to you know, shed some light on, now is the time to do so. Uh, the guest caller number is 646-200-4309. Just press 1, and uh, that puts you in the call queue, and, and we'll take your call in the order that they uh, they come in. All right, so let's go ahead and go over to the first caller. We have a uh, caller from the 316 area code, uh, 0669. Caller, you're on the air. Uh, Shabbat Shalom. Caller from the 316, are you there? All right, let's go to the next caller. We have uh, the 330 area code. Caller from the 330-5550. You're on the air. Shabbat Shalom. Hey, Shabbat Shalom. Hey, I was, uh, I was listening to the show, man, and I was wondering, uh, you know, when you were talking about slavery, uh, what Genesis 9 has to do with slavery, when it talks about Jephthah as well in the 10th of Shem. Well, what it's saying in, in Genesis chapter 9 is not that Japheth, let's, let's read it, all right? Uh, Genesis 9, uh, what verse is that? I'm looking. I believe it's 27. Uh, okay. I don't have my Bible with me. I'm not at home. Yeah, it is 27. So let me, let me read that. It says, um, Genesis 9 and 27 says, The Most High shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. So when it so when it says he, that he is talking about is the most high. It's not talking about Japheth. Okay. But that's the dwelling the, the the dwelling of the largest part. But it says that Japheth will live in the tents of Shem, right? No, it says he shall dwell in the tents of Shem. So that he, you have to understand that it mentions the Most High and it mentions Japheth, right? So which one of those two is the he? The he is actually talking about the Most High dwelling in the tents of Shem. And let me let me show you through uh, precepts that that's talking about the Most High dwelling in the tents of Shem, not Japheth. Well, what precepts are listed there? Yeah, I'm going to give you the precept to show that that, that he is the most well, high. What, 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 what precepts are actually listed there in Genesis 9? Uh, I'm not sure what you mean by what precepts are listed there. Well, you got a Bible with precepts, right? Well, there are Bibles that have, di- all Bibles have different precepts in them, and those precepts aren't always uh, always correct. But the precepts that I'm, I'm going to bring out, will it'll, it'll clarify what I'm saying here. It'll clarify, it'll, 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 you know, speak for itself. So let me, um. Well, I have a King James reference Bible. I don't have it with me, but I know the precepts lead to the New Testament, and, uh, I believe Ecclesiastes chapter two, mm-hmm. thir- thirteen and fourteen, something like that. Well, if you can give me the exact scripture, we'll read your scriptures to see if, if they if they line up with this what this is saying, and then we'll read my precepts and we'll see which one is, is saying which. Because uh, the the precepts I'm going to go into is crystal clear that that's talking about the Most High. Without a shadow of a doubt Just give me a moment to uh, Pull that up I'm actually going into the book of Jasher uh, One moment here I'm, I'm sorry I'm at work So it's going to get noisy sometimes uh, no, no problem Just give me a moment um, I actually yeah. Have to look this uh, particular precept up. Yeah. 
And what uh, – give me the scriptures again that you said are the precepts that you have, and I'll read those while I'm getting Jasha. Read the Ecclesiastes, the Ecclesiastes, or is it the uh, Ephesians? I think it's Ephesians, chapter 2, um, 13 and 14. Ephesians? Please. Is that an Old Testament or new? Ephesians is in the New Testament. Yeah. Yeah, Ephesians is in the New Testament. I thought it surprised me that the Old Testament had a precept that led to the New Testament. No, it was there. Okay, so you said Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13. What, verse 13. 13. Let, me, let me read that here. I'm going to read it as it is. It says, But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Are you saying that's it? Oh yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. So how 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 does that precept? See, see if, if if this says if this says in Genesis nine that Japhet will dwell in the tents of Shem in the New Testament, it's talking about coming over this this divide. Do you read it again? In, in, uh, in the New Testament, what is it? Yeah, Ephesians 2 and 13. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Okay, can you continue? Just the next verse, too. Uh, for he is our peace who hath made partition between us. The partition is the ocean. See, the Lord saith in Genesis, he calls all bodies of water that he separated the sea. So we got tricked when they call it the O-C-N. Okay? So I was reading in Deuteronomy. They crossed the sea. Now I'm led to believe that's the O-C-N. Have you ever heard of something called pre-Columbian history? I'm not sure. You got a computer? Yes, I'm in front of a computer at the moment. Can you, can you type in pre-Columbian artifacts? Uh, I'll, I'll go just in a moment. I'm actually looking up uh, this uh, precept in the Book of Jasher. Um, one moment here. If you type in pre-Columbian artifacts, you'll find that in Ohio and in Michigan, they found the Ten Commandments on a stone called the Decalogue Stone, showing... That is under what's called pre-Columbian history. It is, it is, there's this book called When Rocks Cry Out, and it talks about the Egyptians coming over here with the Israelites to the Americas and settling here and taking over and warring with the Canaanites. Mm-hmm. Okay. But, but that's, um, under, that's under pre pre Columbian artifacts before Columbus. Okay. okay. Well, I I hear, I hear what you're saying, and, and, and with all due respect, what you just said and brought out, if, if if you know, just from my perspective, is is total confusion because nowhere in Ephesians two does it say anything about Japheth. Or or any reference back to Genesis nine as being Japheth or any anywhere within that, does it have anything to do with Genesis nine and twenty seven? Well, it says, well, well, my Bible has a precept for it, and I have a reference Bible. Uh, you know, I hear what right. you're saying. I got I, a King James reference Bible. All right. I now you read that, from the I'm, Bible, and in, in the Bible, I asked is the you read from. I said, is there any precepts? And you said, well, I'm going to look into Shear. So you didn't give me a precept from your Bible. So that, that sounds confusing. So much so that well, you didn't even find your verse in, in Jashir. But well, with your computer, you won't even open yeah. up another tab and type in pre-Columbian artifacts. Well, if what I I'm say saying the Ten is... Commandments are in New, if I say the Ten Commandments stone is in New Mexico, you know that exists. All right. 
Well, what I what I'm saying is, and I, and I know I I know who this is now, Lex Well. It's it's it's, it's been a moment, but what what you're ringing, I, I, brother? I, I is, called two weeks ago, it, and and I haven't hid myself. You didn't ask it's, who it it's, was. Okay, well, brother, I, I, I'm all, I'm gonna put. I'm I'm gonna put you back on 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 hold because I'm actually trying to bring forth some information and I'm not being uh, given the opportunity to. So I'm gonna put you on hold, brother, right? So I can say what I'm gonna say here. And what you brought forth was total philosophy. No nowhere within any of what you said lines up with anything. You know, you're going into pre-Columbian history, which I mean that's fine, but. We don't got to do that. The Bible speaks for itself. The precepts, line upon line, here, here a little, there a little, they, they speak for themselves. We don't need uh, inter- interjection of anything else to prove what the scriptures are saying. So let me go into Jasher. I'm going to give you the scripture, right? And, it, and it's crystal clear. Um, one moment. All right. One moment here. And this is for... Uh, not just for you, brother. It's for uh, you know all the other listeners who are listening as well, so that they can have this precept um, for themselves. Uh, let's see here. As a matter of fact. While I'm getting this so that we can uh, make the most out of our time, I'm going to open it up for the next caller. But I will be getting the precept to Genesis 9 and 27 in the midst of taking the next call. So let's go over to the 502 area code 502 5773. Shabbat Shalom, you're on the air. Shalom, this is Rob. This is Brother Shum. I'm just listening in. I'm from a different number oh. today, but uh, I just wanted to ask. I mean, uh, mention something to you. Uh, yes, sir. About some statements uh, that were the line with the article that you brought out. Yes, sir. Uh, last week, uh, RT published a uh, article. Mm-hmm. It was in connection with Iran. Are you familiar with the one I'm talking about, Elder? Uh, well, if you you know, go ahead and give me a little bit more. I, I may, I may know. Uh, I know you were saying like the false flag that they did, like you know, most recently, uh, uh 9/11. So last okay. week, uh, it was mentioned in RT News that in 2012 they was trying to point towards Iran with this. But it just resurfaced uh, last week. Uh, <clears throat> what they are doing is they're saying that Iran has a connection with 911, the 911 attack. And uh, RT put out a article saying that the U.S. judge in uh, NYC, New York, came out and, and 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 came with a verdict to say that Iran has been charged. To pay ten point six billion dollars in, in uh in, brother Sean Nawal, are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? Elder Lamar, can you hear me? If you're speaking, I can't hear you. Man. Hello, can y'all hear me? Welcome online. Uh, 
Hello. Completely just cut me off. Uh, Brother Shamnu Allah. Okay, now I can hear you. Can you hear me, Elder? Yeah, I'm I'm back. My internet went out. Um, <laughs> unfortunately, I didn't hear anything you said. What last I heard you say, you were talking about 911 on the RT article, and that's what it, that's when it cut out. So if you could just pick back up from there, so I can hear what you said. Okay, yeah. So on RT, that was reporting. Now back in 2012, they reported and, and was pointing at Iran with. Accusations about them being having connections with uh, the 911 attack and the hijackers. So recently, last week, uh, it resurfaced, and the judge, the Supreme Judge in NYC, New York, said that uh, they gave the verdict that Iran has to pay a 10.6 billion dollar uh, fund because they were, did not uh, give. I guess uh, valid evidence proving that they did not have any connections with the 911 attack. So I looked at that as it was as something major, you know. And when you spoke about the false flag, that brought it back to my remembrance from last week. But that that that's a big, you know, uh, article in, in these times, knowing what they're they're they're, they're constantly trying to instigate something with Iran, and that was major. Right. So I just wanted to ask you if. Uh, you uh, knew about that. Um, I, I I wasn't. I don't think I was aware of that exactly. But uh, I don't know if this is linking into. And this is. I'm glad you brought that out because it did bring to my memory of something else I wanted to mention with uh, all the nuclear things going on. I brought up the nuclear talks. But um, Iran has been recently talking about um, the nuclear agreement and basically, uh, you know, discarding the nuclear agreement that they made with America and the West saying that, uh, you know, that it's not being kept on the American side. So they're going to do away with that agreement. So I don't know if that's tying into what you're, what you're saying, but, uh, Oh, oh it does. It, it, you know, the death, my right. I mean to cut you off. It definitely goes hand in hand because another thing also on RT that was reported, and it's, it, it, they're keeping their eye on Iran and, and the U.S. because it, it stated that out of all the money that the U.S. has been using in their defense systems and being able to defend against certain missiles, Iran has a missile that they cannot defend. And that if that's not by the proxy, I don't know what is. So right. these things are happening. These, these things are happening. You, so You have to send me that article. Um you have to have to send it to me if you know if you have it when you have it, so I can check it out. But um, but yeah, definitely uh, with the with the the, uh, the missiles shooting the intercontinental ballistic missile that Iran was testing and shooting that America is saying that it said death to Israel or we're going to wipe Israel out on the missile. It was engraved in the missile, um, and then this nuclear agreement that they're, Iran is saying that they're going to uh, walk away from. Um. And then what you're saying about you know with the, with the money, uh, all those things are definitely uh, just more signs of of you know things unfolding. Uh, it's, it's like Bible prophecy uh, you know tells us it's going to unfold. Um, so yeah, de- definitely thanks for bringing that up. No problem, Elder, and uh, yeah, I'm listening in, man, and just continue to stay strong, Elder. All right, likewise, likewise. Hopefully next time you know you'll be back back with us in the queue, but. Nonetheless, glad to have you here listening. All right. All right. Stay blessed. Shabbat shalom. 
All right. Now, for Lex Will. Lex Will called in and said that Genesis 9 and 27 is referring to Ephesians 2, 10 and 14, right? And and we read that, and, I, I, you know, it was really nothing there. And we was brought pre-Columbian history to, I guess, you know, bring it bring it home. But the Bible don't work that way. Um, the Bible is, is, according to Isaiah 28, 9 and 10, is, is, is precept upon precept, line upon line. Here a little, there a little is how we understand doctrine and and have knowledge. So the book is actually the book of Jubilees. I was mistaken. I thought I was in Jasher. It's actually in Jubilees. So I'm going to read Genesis 9 and 27, and then we're going to go to the book of Jubilees and see if, if what was said earlier is, is exactly what uh, Genesis is saying. So Genesis 9 and 27 says, The Most High shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. So I was saying that that he it's talking about in Genesis 9 and 27 is talking about the Most High. It's not talking about Japheth being that he. The Most High will dwell in the tents of Shem. Now let's prove this with the precept. Let's go to the book of Jubilees. We're in the book, book of Jubilees, chapter 7. We're going to read verse 12. It says, The Most High shall enlarge Japheth, and the Most High shall dwell in the dwelling of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. So that's the exact scripture that we just read in Genesis 9 and 27, being read in Jubilees 7 and 12, showing us that that he is, is right there in Jubilees 7 and 12, talking about the Most High. It says, God shall dwell in the dwelling of Shem. It doesn't say, Japheth shall dwell in the dwelling of Shem. So it's talking about the Most High, not Japheth. Right? And that's been a, a, a big confusion throughout the uh, the, the, the biblical, uh, you, know, theology, you know, theological world that that was talking about Japheth. A lot of, you know, Israelites that are under the understanding of, of um you know, who Esau is, who Japheth is, we'll try to say, see, that talking about Japheth, and the Japheth, Japheth is, is, is the Israeli Europeans that are in Israel now today. Those, that's not Japheth. Those, 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 uh, those in Israel today that are European are, are, are Khazars, they're Esau. Um, so you can't use that scripture anymore to say that that's talking about uh, those people being Japhetic. It's, it's talking about the Most High dwelling in the dwelling of Shem, because, of course, Shem was the one whom the Most High chose for his seed to come through Abraham, Isaac, and then Jacob. The Most High dwelling with Shem. So that's that. All right, and um, we'll go to the next caller. Again, if you have any comments, any questions, anything you would like to add, definitely uh, call in. A guest call at number 646-200-4309. Just press the number one that puts you in the call queue. we got about eight minutes until overtime. Um, if we don't have any calls in the queue, we'll go ahead and end the show and let you enjoy your Sabbath. All right, let me see if uh, this is a new caller here. I'm not sure if this is the, uh, the, the, the call we just came off of, but we're going to go to... Um, the three one six area code. I'm like, he be, I'm like, he be cast. Zero six six nine. You're on the air. Shabbat shalom. <laughs> Caller from the three one six. Are you there? I'm the captain. Shalom. Hey, Shabbat shalom. Um, just just chiming in, listening. Oh, okay. had you in the picture. Uh, if anything is out, I'll put you back in. It's tiresome though. Okay, thanks. All right, Shabbat shalom. Mm-hmm. All right. If you could press one for me, call it from the three one six. And um, I don't show any more callers in the queue. So if um, you'd like to speak, now's the time. Uh, the 
floor is open. If not, then we'll go ahead and end the show and wish you a higher speed. Go our separate ways. <clears throat> Uh, let me see Hello? here if this is a oh, – okay. I just didn't know if this was you or not. You're still in the queue. All right. I'll put you back in, all right? All right. Okay. I just wanted to say one thing. Okay. One moment. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was going to call my piece, but I ain't going to say much. But when the scripture you just brought out in Genesis 9, it's clear. And the priest have cleared it all the way up, but – I never heard that scripture brought in that context, but it's clear what the Father is saying now. He's given three prophetic or, 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 or representations of how the three sons would be in the earth. Total exactly. separation of the of the three. So I just wanted to say exactly. that. But yeah, that's it. Exactly. All, all, all praises to the Most High. You're exactly right. The Most High is showing out what he's going to do with Japheth. He's showing what he's going to do with Shem, and then he's showing what he's going to do with Canaan. He'll enlarge Japheth, he'll dwell with Shem, and Canaan will be the Most High Servant. So uh, that's what that that's what that's saying. All dealing with the Most High. So praise the Father for that understanding and uh, having that having that priest up there. All right. So I don't see any other callers that would like to speak at this time. So we'll go ahead and end the show now. Again, want to give uh, you know special thanks to uh, brothers and sisters for tuning in. I know it's been um, about a month since we did a show last time, so I know y'all you know want the show every week, but unfortunately, uh, you know there's a lot going on within the church as far as trying to get things uh, in order and. Um, you know, sometimes it's not enough time to to make it happen, but uh, we'll definitely we'll definitely be here whenever the time permits and continue to put forth the information. It'll be the Most High's will. Until next time, I want to say peace and blessings to all all of y'all. I hope you have a, a blessed Passover. Should we not speak again before then, and that your new year is a prosperous one. Until then, we'll see Zion soon. Kwam Yashala. Shabbat Shalom.
so I got a lot of questions. Time's running short, no time for half stepping. Thoroughly expecting, checking for deception. Gotta get it straight, a uh, lot on my plate. Uh, Satan's concentration is only perpetration. Spirit of the truth, uh, ripped it from the roof up. Uh, watch the most high, chop it up like a food cup. Then put it on ice like a cool cup. Minus sickness arising, this would not be televised. A higher by Hashem, your shire still be magnified. And if they told you otherwise, then they drop a light. Straight dying to my blood, like a homicide. Going to take struggle with the Holy One inside. Quam, Yasha Allah, Quam, Quam, Yasha Allah. Quam, Yasha Allah, Quam, Quam, Yasha Allah. Rise of Israel, return to the Father. This is the beginning of a saga. Shalom, 17 AD, we ran from Rome, from Rome. into Africa from our home, from our got home. saved by America, now it's on, or should I say, oh, heritage is gone, cause of this obedience, we was wrong, we was wrong. the curse lifting off, us to return back home, now we running back to them, gotta get back to it, discovered our history, for all this nobility, King James the six in the first, you ain't feeling me, taking it back, no substitute for arrogance, this is what they fail to tell you, this is where they negligent, no pressure, make a wise man, man, so why you settling, down, trotting, mind, ready, set, never go, though, the best slave to have is the one that think he free, though, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free, though. Lies triple up to it, speedo. You can't go against Christ, Devo. Christ brought us back to the Father, Devo. Six five four three two one. Zero. Zero.